So as we talked about earlier, the biggest difference between mixing at front of house and broadcast is that you're not mixing to a room, you're mixing to a loudness level, which is metered by the final plug-in in the signal path on the master bus, which is this loudness meter. We mix to minus 13 for worship, and we mix to around minus 18 for the speaking, just to keep the, the dynamic range a little more limited, um, and so that people aren't turning their TVs or phones up and down as we move through the various components of the service. So we're going to go ahead and go right to the top and listen to the various components of the band and build a bit of a mix, uh, and we're going to see what everything does. So... So we're going to start with our bass. Then we have an acoustic guitar. We have our keys. Organ. Kick mic. There's our kick in. Kick out. And we blend them together. Then we have snare. There's the top mic. Here's the bottom mic. And we'll blend that. We'll also bring up the side snare. Then we have our tom. Nothing going on there right now. Overheads. Hats. Ride mic. And here's our track. So right now it's just a pad. So we'll put together a quick mix and talk about it. Play that back from the beginning. So it's very important to make sure that we're building a good foundation and to do that we start with our drums and we want to make sure the kit is very balanced. We use reverb to create some depth. If we get rid of the reverb, it sounds good but it's very flat, it's very two dimensional. When we open up the reverb it sounds like you're in a space. Then we'll add our bass in. Add our keys in. Then we'll open that up. Our guitars. And it's important to keep a good amount of track in the mix, whether that's a pad or any additional backing. Uh, that really does fill out the sound and support it a little more. So we never want our track to overpower like this. But right here is pretty good. So we'll go play that back again, and then we'll add our vocals in. But again, we're creating a foundation for the vocal to rest on. Especially when we're mixing broadcast, we never ever want the vocals to stick out too far. It sounds very jarring. Uh, so we want to make sure that the band is supporting the vocals. We're creating a good foundation for the vocals to just rest on and not stick out too far. So what we've done there is uh, we've made sure that the lead is prominent but not sticking out too far in the mix, and we have our BGVs just in the back to support. Again, we'll listen to that one more time. If we had the vocal out too far, it's very jarring. It doesn't sound cohesive. Too much BGV. So we want to make sure the lead is supported by the BGVs, but overall that the vocals are sitting with the band, not apart from the band.
So we're going to take a look at another song and examine uh, the mix. So first thing we're going to do is make sure that we're on the right snapshot. So I'm going to hit next. And as you can see, the key has changed. Uh, on the top of the screen, it says, Lord, I give. And that's the title of the next song. So let's take a listen. So I'm going to go and mute some things, and we'll build a mix from the ground up. So, as always, our drum group comes up first, and I'm going to go through and mute everything else. So we're going to start with our kick, and best place to start is to bring it up to Unity, and let's figure out our blend. Good there, then we'll add our snare in. So we've added our kick, our snare, and I've just added our overheads. Overheads are a great way to get a good picture of the entire kit, but always be careful. Too much overheads and it gets very washy and very sibilant. So we'll bring that down. And then we'll go and add our toms in. It's not playing them right now, but we'll just have them there just in case he goes for a fill. Next thing we're gonna wanna do is add in some parallel compression to the shells. It just gives a bit more punch uh, to the drums. Too much and it starts to sound a little too uh, pumped. So we always wanna make sure we're blending that in just to support and we'll add our bass. keys, and organ. So we've got individual control here when we open up our spill set of the keys and organ. Organ. And guitar. Remember, guitar is driving the majority of this song, so... And when you listen carefully, you can hear the keys, you can hear the organ, you can hear the guitar. Um, and it sounds full. Too little guitar. And the song starts to sound hollow. The guitar is really filling out that mid-range. If we pull the keys down, we still get that drive, but we lose a lot of the extra stuff that's happening to fill. But now we have a really well-supported band. And that's even before we add our track. So we'll add that in. And we've built a really great bass layer for the vocals to be a part of. And so that's the best way to spend your time when you come in to start mixing broadcast is um, give yourself enough time to build a good mix with the band where it sounds full, there's some dimension and depth. Um, it's not a matter of hearing everything individually, it's being able to hear everything as a unit. And now we can add our vocals in. So I'll unmute the vocal group and we'll start with the lead vocal. So that's a good level there. We'll start with our BGBs next. Meet the lead. That's a really great vocal blend. The BGVs aren't stepping in front of the lead. Again, the lead is determining the direction. They're encouraging the congregation. We never want the lead to be buried. So it's always important to have planning center open and make sure you know who's leading the song. And then use the BGVs to uh, support accordingly. You can grab them here and, and uh, push them up or pull them down. And we haven't even gotten to our effects yet, but the mix is sounding full. Uh, everybody has their place. The vocals aren't sticking out too far, so we'll run that one more time and then start unmuting our effects. So there's a snare reverb, drum reverb, instrument reverb for the keys. 
guitar, vocal, a little too much guitar reverb there. Now we have a really full mix, and we haven't even added our audience mics yet, so when we fade those in, we start to hear a bit of the congregation and we get a bit more of that depth, um, which is exactly what we want when we're mixing the broadcast. So what we'll do uh, to wrap up is just go through each individual uh, instrument section with their corresponding reverb, uh, just to hear what the difference that makes. And again, reverb is one of those tricks we use to create some depth. So if a guitar is sounding too bright, we can dial in a bit more reverb to mellow it out. We can also use reverb to help the vocals out and add some sustain to the end um, and, and change uh, the sound of things like keyboards and organs too. So again, we want to use that sparingly. We don't want to wash out the mix, but it is a great way to create dimension and depth. So let's start with the drums with our reverb muted. And again, it's very flat, sounds very in your face. It's almost as if you were standing right in front of the drum kit. But if we fade in our overall drum reverb, which is just, uh, mainly on the toms and the overheads, We get a bit more sustain, and then we add our snare reverb in. And we get that nice tail on the snare that gives it some sustain. It doesn't sound as short. Let's move over to the keys now. So we've just cranked our reverb and we've washed out the keys. We can bring that down a bit. That's exaggerated. Sounds like it's underwater. We'll pull that back a bit. Move over to our guitars. And bring in our reverb. Here's what too much would sound like. And we've just completely washed out the guitar. And now there's no definition, it sounds muddy. We'll pull that back. And listen to all of that in context now. And finally our vocal. We'll just illustrate this with our lead. Fade the reverb in. I give you my soul. Some nice sustain on the vocal. We can also get creative with the vocal delay. Make sure we tap in our tempo. So one, two, three, four. Run that again. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my heart. Now we want to go easy on this. We can do some uh, vocal throws or even leave it at around minus 20 or minus 10 and just have that recurring delay in the back. Again, a little more dimension and depth. Lord, I give you my heart. I we never want it to stand out soul. too much and be noticeable in that way. So when we're doing any sort of movement with our effects, with our delays, we want to be very slow and deliberate. Um, even if you've made a mistake, pull that fader down slowly. And if we kill our effects, we can hear the difference that it makes. So in just a few minutes, we've built a really great mix. We started with our drums, we moved to our bass, added keys and guitars in, made sure we had a good level of track, dialed in the right amount of reverb for the song. We'll use more reverb for slower songs, less reverb for faster songs and then built a vocal mix where the lead was out front uh, and the BGVs were there to support, but the whole thing sat together as a unit. We should never, when listening to a mix, hear individual components standing out on their own. The band, the singers, they're all one team, and so we should hear one unified sound. So we'll take one final listen to this mix, and that's it.
And it's important to recognize that the mix is always changing. Not just are different people leading songs, but different instruments take prominence. Uh, a guitar may start one song or the keys may lead another song. There may be a cut where it's just the drums. Uh, so the mix is always moving. That's why it's so important to keep your hands on the console at all times. Uh, the band is always shaping and changing uh, their dynamic level, and it's important to respond accordingly. Uh, and the best way to anticipate this is to practice. And the best way to practice is to listen to the songs, familiarize yourself with the arrangements, familiarize yourself with the sounds, uh, who's starting, who's ending, uh, what's the main instrument in the verse, the, the chorus, the bridge. Is there an instrumental section? Is there a solo? So that way, when you come into mix, you understand how the song is going to shape and grow from the intro right to the outro.